Now there's a simple recipe for a gaming PC. You generally need a computer and you need a graphics card. Now one of the simplest ways to do this is to buy an office PC like this HP G2 mini tower. No frills, everyday computing in a compact package. Now GPU wise this is a little more complicated. Not everything will fit, there's power requirements and bottlenecks. But this palette RTX 3050 6GB should do the job nicely. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech and we're back this week with a super budget £250 build that anyone can do. A simple recipe tried and tested. Buy an ex-corporate office PC and add a graphics card. Now I'm super excited about this build today as we're going to be using the new RTX 3056 gigabyte. But wait, now hold on Andy, I hear you say, isn't it crap? Uh, yes, it's not a high flyer, but used for its correct use case as a direct replacement for the GTX 1650, it's a little firecracker. Two years ago during the GPU crisis, I was paying £250 for just a 1650 new, so I'm not complaining now. So first things first, our base system. We're going to need some basic requirements here, DDR4, an SSD and really Intel 8th generation or above. Exceptions can be made for your own tastes like an i7-6700 maybe, but these are the minimum I'd go for. Now cruising the used tech highway that is eBay, I stumbled across this HP G2 mini tower for £61.59p delivered. It has an 8th gen i5-8500, 6 cores, 6 threads, a 3.9GHz all-core turbo and 9MB of level 3 cache. Oh yeah, there's UHD... Ah, no, <laughs> I'm not going there. Maybe another video. I'm tempted though. Uh, we have a single 8GB stick of DDR4 2666MHz RAM and there's a 256GB M.2 SSD which was a nice touch as I was expecting a SATA SSD. Uh, power department, there's a 180 watt gold power supply which is just about what you get with any of these OEMs these days. Quite honestly, amazing specs for just over £60. Uh, this was a deal that I'm seeing more and more often, with buy now prices generally around £70 to £80, with more specced up models going for around £100, with 16GB of RAM and a 500GB SSD. So that will bring us to the first problem slash upgrade we're going to make. Uh, we need 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, so I'm just going to add this 16 gigabytes 3200 MHz DDR4 Corsair kit, which cost me £28 new. Yes, DDR4 is this cheap these days. Uh, we don't have access to XMP or anything like that, so it will default to 2666 MHz. Well, that's the theory. Uh, simply buying an 8GB stick as well for 10 to £15 would also suffice, uh, but this is what I had to hand. Now, the star of the show, the new RTX 3050 6GB. It's not a beast, being a cut down version of the 8GB RTX 3050, but its party trick is it requires no external power, so just slap it in a PCI slot and you're away. There's 2,304 shading units, 72 TMUs, 32 ROPs, 72 tensor cores and 18 ray tracing cores. So it's no powerhouse, but if you look at it as a direct replacement for the GTX 1650, it's actually an awesome little card. Okay, it's not going to play the latest AAA titles at ultra settings 1080p, but buy an old office PC, slap it in and you've got a gaming PC. £159.95p, well spent, and it's got a three year warranty. Plus we do have DLSS technology, which is another trick up its sleeve, and we'll be making full use of that today. Yes, there are better options if you're brave enough to go and find a you know used custom system on Facebook Marketplace, or build your own will always offer better performance, but this is a clean little build and the HP tower came refurbished, it was like cleaned out inside, there was new thermal paste. So apart from replacing the RAM and slotting in the GPU, we have a finished build in about 5 minutes, plus we've got a fully activated copy of Windows 11 as well, what's not to love? So the total build cost including the 
PC and the RAM kit and the GPU is £249.54p. We won't get caught out on this channel. If it's £250, it's that or under. Yes, we are stuck with a 256GB SSD, but as I mentioned before, you can pick up these slightly better specs for £20, £30, £40 more with a larger SSD and the 16GB of RAM. Uh, in hindsight, that's probably what I should have done, uh, but we're still under my £250 budget that I set, and you can pick up a 500GB SATA SSD for about £25 these days, or maybe you've got an old HDD lying around just for some cheap mass storage. Food for four anyway. So that's the PC, that's the build. Let's test some games and see what it can do. So first up we have CS2 at 1080p high settings and we have a respectable average of 128 with 1% to 73 and a few drops in the 0.1% to 47. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that the RTX 3050 6 GB. Now it's worth mentioning at this point that the RTX 3050 is a PCIe 4.0 times 8 card, so we will be losing a bit of uh, bandwidth for running it in a PCI 3.0 system. There also is only a 96 bit memory bus, which isn't great, but it is what it is, and we're working with what we have. Uh, that said, you know, this is a respectable uh, experience. You could potentially drop everything to low, but CS2 does like cores, and really, we are running into the limitations of the CPU here as well with a slight CPU bottleneck. So, CS2 perfectly playable on a system like this. Next up we have Fortnite uh, and again at 1080p with the medium preset and TSR set to low with 75% resolution scale. Now this makes the game look pretty but doesn't sacrifice uh, too much on performance as when you turn things up to like high in Fortnite these days it can be pretty brutal. Uh, so an average of 110 FPS, 1% of 50 and 0.1% of 11. We have the usual 0.1% for Fortnite here but as we can see our little CPU and uh, GPU are performing great together well up in the 90s. Um, again you could maybe go competitive settings 1080p low with epic view distance uh, to achieve a more high refresh rate experience but I like to test things evenly and I mean as a basic entry level experience here for Fortnite you know we are we are running on a 250 pound computer and that's a pretty awesome result really F1 2023 next and a game that always surpasses my expectations. 1080p high settings with DLSS set to quality. We have an average of 83 and 1% to 47 and 0.1% of 38. Now this game always performs well and bear in mind we are looking at this RTX 3056GB as a replacement for the 1650 so it's not going to blow our minds. Now I did attempt this with some ray tracing turned on uh, exactly the same settings with ray tracing set to medium I'll put the settings up on screen now and we did actually achieve an average of 73 with 1% of 57 and 0.1% of 46 now I can't really tell the difference on this game with the ray tracing on and the ray tracing off I mean it's a little bit nicer looking but really I would probably just play uh, with it switched off and the normal high settings uh, a game next that runs uh, pretty well on pretty much anything uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warfare 3, a 1080p with the basic preset and DLSS set to quality, we achieved an average of 94, 1% to 62 and 0.1% to 24. Uh, no complaints here, probably the only shooter that I'm actually any good at. Um, basic preset is kind of a medium low mix I think or maybe medium uh, but it makes the game look okay and it still doesn't sacrifice too much performance. You can turn things down a little bit lower just to gain a few more FPS if that's your thing uh, but I'd have no complaints playing uh, COD on this little system so that's a pass in my opinion. Now we're getting a little more demanding from here on in, uh, Cyberpunk uh, 2077 
1080p high settings with DLSS set to quality. Now this did a lot better than I expected actually. We achieved an average of 65 FPS with respectable percentiles at 41 and 35. Uh, I thought this would do a bit worse than this as uh, I know the 1650 can struggle to get uh, 60 FPS on medium settings. Uh, so I was surprised here and I did turn on um, ray tracing as well. Uh, I do run the benchmark as it's the most consistent way of getting a score and it's pretty um, representable to actual gameplay it doesn't differ too much on this game uh, ray tracing same settings high uh, with ray tracing set on again i'll put the settings on screen now dlss set to quality we achieved an average of 34 with 1% to 25 and 0.1% of 22 now this is more like what i expect ray tracing to do on this little card it's just half our frame rate straight down the middle and uh, cyberpunk here is no exception to that so we'll move on to something else that's even more demanding now and that is The Last of Us. Now I couldn't actually find a ray tracing setting for The Last of Us in the menu. Again I'll, I'll pop that up so you guys can see what I went with. Uh, 1080p medium DLSS set to quality again I have been making use of this feature as we do have it so why not. Um, averages 63 FPS 1% of 32 0.1% uh, of 24. Now it is a pretty CPU intensive game um, it does like quite a lot of cores and good cores uh, so our little i5 here was starting to struggle a little bit um, but again it's a playable experience i've played this at low settings 30 fps when it came out uh, just for the laugh on the minimum requirements so i could quite happily uh, play through the game like this again you can always tweak settings you could go for a mix of medium and low and maybe turn dlss to balanced again to gain a bit more performance if you're a stickler for having those one percent at 60 or above now last up a game that is going to run absolutely atrociously on the system like this and i would never recommend you even go near it uh, and that's starfield 1080 P low settings medium indirect lighting so it doesn't look like a five-year-old's done the graphics DLSS set to quality and 75% resolution scale we had to do a lot of tweaks here even to get what we've achieved today and that is an average of 44 with 1% to 25 0.1% of 2 Starfield you know it's just a Bethesda game it's unoptimized it doesn't work well on anything you know you need a sort of fairly competent computer and even then it won't even run very well you know i have a fairly competent computer and it kind of struggles at 1440p with a 79 uh, 7800 xt sorry so a system like this you're not going to be looking at playing starfield but the other AAA titles that have come out recently or at least in the last couple of years will run pretty well so that will bring us to the end of the game benchmarks today now i have run some synthetic benchmarks as well uh, 3d marks time spy achieved a graphic score of 5013 points uh, and a cpu score of 5162 with a combined score of 5034 apparently that's a legendary score but i guess not too many people have tested uh, this combination of hardware you can also compare this to your system see how it's performing against it uh, Cinebench R20 now and we achieved a score of 2243 which is quite respectable uh, for our little 6 core 6 thread i5. Uh, so that will bring us to the conclusion I think um, but before I waffle on I'd love to know your thoughts about building a little system like this. I think for £250 this makes complete sense you know if you're looking for something that's simple, reliable easy to build pretty much straight out the box i mean it took us the whole of five minutes to assemble it you know so going for an option like this rather than building a custom pc with a custom case custom power supply motherboard you know you're you're saving a lot of cost and if you you're wanting something that just will sit under your desk and work then i would recommend something like this now you've probably all been shouting at me and i've probably got uh, a few um, thumbs down but I mean the RTX 3050 6 gigabyte. Okay, yeah, I know it's not the greatest card yet. Okay, what 180 pound, 150 pound. There are a lot better options, and I know somebody is going to tell me buy an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte or buy this. Um, I mean we're purely looking at at this today as buy an office PC, 
buy a card, stick it in, off you go. You know, I don't have to modify the power supply. I don't have to add adapters. It just fits in the PCIe slot, plug and play, turn the PC on and off we go. Yes, there are so many better options out there. If you've got a bit more wiggle room, you know, a 1660 Ti, for instance, will probably gain a little bit more performance over this. But again, you don't have the features like DLSS. Uh, to just boost those frame rates a bit so i'm impressed today i think this went pretty well uh, certainly pretty much all of the titles were playable today at respectable settings except um starfield which is just shit really excuse my french um, but yeah thank you for watching the video i'll leave it there uh, please subscribe if you've got this far uh, thank you to all of you that have uh, take care god bless and hopefully i'll see you in the next one cheers